Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Amma ba'd. What's the role of manners in Islam? As we know, the Prophet ﷺ had the best of manners, and his Quran, and his his manners were the Quran. So, if you wanted to see a living role of the Quran or a living manifestation of the Quran, of what we're being taught in the Quran then you would find that in the manners of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so that means we need the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in order to actualize and to know what the best of manners are and as Imam Bar Bahari Rahimahullah Ta'ala said Al-Islam huwa sunnah wa sunnatul hi al-Islam that Islam is the Sunnah and the Sunnah is Islam. That you need both of them. One is dependent on the other. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us both of those forms of revelation to complement one another. So that way we could see the, how the Quran was supposed to be practiced. And that came through the actions and the statements of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَا مِنْ شَيْءٍ أَثْكُلُوا فِي مَيْزَانَ مُؤْمِنْ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ مِنْ حُسْنُ الْخُلْقِ وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يُبْغِدُوا الْفَحِشَ الْبَدِي The Prophet wasallam said There isn't a thing which weighs heavier on the scale of the believers than righteous manners or good manners, good conduct. And verily Allah hates or detests sinful and wicked speech. Letting us know that the sunnah is the best. The manners of the Prophet والسلام, are the best. And that there isn't a thing that weighs heavier on the scale of the believers, of course after Tawheed. That you have to have the, believe in Allah and worship Him properly. But a part of that worship is having good manners. Following the way of the Prophet wasallam, Having righteous conduct. So he said, مَا مِنْ شَيْءٍ أَثْكُلُوا فِي مِزَانَ مُؤْمِنْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ مِنْ حُسْنُ الْخُلْقِ وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يُبْغِذُوا فَعِشِ الْبَذِي That there isn't a thing which weighs heavier on the scale of the believer. So meaning that you have to be a believer first, of course than good manners. And verily Allah hates sinful and wicked speech. Letting us know we gotta watch our tongues. The Prophet ﷺ said, or the Prophet ﷺ was asked, Su'ila Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam an akhtari ma yudkhul al-nas al-jannah. The Prophet ﷺ was asked, what is the thing that mostly will get people into the paradise, enter people into paradise? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Taqwallah wa husn al-khulq The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam answered by saying Fearing Allah, having taqwa And good manners Wusu'ila an akthari ma yudkhul al-nas al-nar And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked about the thing that will enter the people into the hellfire the most and he said, Al-Fim wa Faraj. So that's, that's very important. He said the mouth, meaning the tongue, sinful speech, and the Faraj, the, the private parts, meaning that people commit adultery, people masturbate, people do all kind of things from their desires. And the mouth and the tongue are both ways in which we can lose control of our desires. That's why it's imperative for us to control those things. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ was asked and he answered by that al-thim wa faraj, letting us know that, that we have to watch our 
we have to watch our, our what we say we have to be careful of lying and cheating and cursing people and having wicked and sinful speech uh, backbiting and slander and that in addition to that we have to watch following our vain desires and committing the haram with our private parts if you can safeguard those two things he guarantees you paradise that's another hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that by controlling your mouth controlling your private parts the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said I, I, I guarantee that person Jannah that that person will get into paradise so that's beautiful that's a ni'mah from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that and, and that's uh, one of the greatest things you could be rewarded with or that is the greatest thing you could be rewarded with is paradise so controlling our tongues having good manners trying to attain taqwa that will help us to get to paradise and have the greatest success and with the month of Ramadan steadily approaching as well another way in which we can exercise that, exercise our iman to get taqwa is by following the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when, when we do, and we're all going to fast bi idnillah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says kutiba alaykum siyam kama kutiba alaykum min qablikum la'allakum tattakun he says Subhanahu wa ta'ala fi kitab al kareem uh, fasting was prescribed for you. Fasting is prescribed for you. Similar to the way it was prescribed for those who people who came before you in order that you would attain taqwa, in order that you would become God fearful or God conscious. So if you want to exercise your taqwa, you're going to have the opportunity if you fast the holy month of Ramadan that it will give us a chance to practice those good manners and practice fasting in order in order that you would gain taqwa that's what we want may Allah help us and taqwa as we've mentioned in countless of our lessons and countless speeches and khutbahs is putting something between you and the hellfire like a shield between you and the hellfire by doing those commandments what Allah has commanded in His Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam and by staying away from those things which are prohibited by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's what's going to help us to gain taqwa taqwa Allah azza wa jal and to exercise our iman so don't let this Ramadan pass you by without striving to do your utmost in deeds reading the Quran, exercising your taqwa making your salat on time, making your extra salat the night prayer, qiyam al-layl and, 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 and tarawih all of those things will help us to achieve what we're trying to achieve and that's taqwa and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam